Yep, no worries. Make sure these are out of shot. Get these bits are done. Before it's warmer there. Oh. In focus, all good. So I caught your LinkedIn post last week um, on Fujitsu. Seemed to create a lively debate amongst your your network. I know the situation is constantly evolving, but but give us give us your take on that, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I, I think lively debate is probably an understatement. Um, as you know, I like to be a bit more provocative with things that I know sometimes people feel um, uncomfortable with with talking about or maybe offering their opinion because it's something they believe in, but they're concerned on how they might be viewed, which I think is actually quite interesting with this um, Horizon and, and Fujitsu uh, scandal, because I think a lot of people have uh, a lot of very strong opinions, um, as they really should have, uh, in honesty, uh, to do with this. Um, you know, where this came from, uh, from my perspective, was, was fairly simple. Um, you know, am I aware that Fujitsu work uh, in central government? Yes, um, obviously, I know a number of the large companies who work in central government. Um, am I aware of the Horizon uh, platform? I am by name. Uh, I wouldn't say I know uh, any more than that. Um, I think something I was actually a little bit disappointed by um, myself, um, almost a bit embarrassed, was uh, learning from what was obviously the, the ITV drama that is what brought it to everyone's attention. Um, that really, that was the thing that brought it into you know, the greater public eye, um, but, but to me as well. Um, and I sort of feel like I've got my finger on the pulse uh, for a number of things. Um, and I think that was the, the, the thing that really kind of, you know, brought it to the fore for me. And it, what it did was it started allowing me to go and have a little bit more of a look here. You know, obviously it's of interest to me because, you know, I work in technology, I understand these customers, I understand how these things work. Um, but really, um, you know, I care a great deal uh, uh, about uh, people who are the ultimate end consumers of technology. Um, and, and knowing, you know, how we operate Cloud Gateway, and the main reason I think, in many ways, for why we uh, set about doing what we were doing, um, is is kind of all based on integrity, um, and that's the thing that really got me uh, in the whole thing. Um, is that it's just such a crushing lack of integrity. It's not something that is about technology for me. It's not me looking at um, a poor system. There's plenty of poor IT systems across the world, um, certainly in central government. Um, it's the manner. Uh, in which the system was put forward into government. It was the manner in which it was forced through. There's lots of you know, evidence um, in the public domain that shows uh, this big, big project was late. It wasn't uh, to the scope of uh, what was uh, originally uh, requested. And the fact that there was knowledge that it was wrong and that there was just this horrendous lack of desire to show any integrity that's poor, but that's poor on a different level when you can see people's lives being affected. That goes into a whole nother realm, which I, I, I take very personally, uh, let alone professionally. And as someone, again, you know, I, I say it with a, a wry smile on my face, you know, I'm more than happy to go and uh, poke the, uh, the, the public sector bear or the, the, the big corporate bear and say, okay, let's, let's see what we think about this. This is just a kind of start of this. It, it's not good enough. But when we're talking about people's lives, we're talking about people who ultimately killed themselves. This is really serious stuff. There is potential here for criminal procedures. And I think the world is watching to see what happens here because this is a big, big precedent that could be set um, not just for uh, justice to be served um, uh, in, in the criminal proceeding and for the people who were very wronged, but it's about how the entire market now changes, including public sector procurement. And I, I remain more than just interested you know, in, in, in all of these areas. And I want to see as well what, what people think. I want to see if people are prepared, you know, if you want to hide behind me uh, being the, the mouthpiece of this, just on, you know, a piece of social media, I'm more than happy to, to have some very robust public conversations about it. So, as you alluded to, you've spent the, the latter part of your career working in and around the, the public sector. Um, I know from conversations that we've had, you've got a great deal of experience, both good and bad, working with the public sector and their network of 
sort of key suppliers, uh, you know, of the ilk of, of Fujitsu. What would you say are the, the biggest learnings that uh, the public sector themselves um, should be looking to, to make and, and then Fujitsu and, and others like them? And obviously we're not um, uh, of a similar standard size in terms of what we do for the public sector. But yeah, talk to me about or talk to us a little bit about what those lessons learned should, should look like and how we can quickly make sure that this sort of thing, this sort of thing doesn't happen again. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot <clears throat> that can be learned from this. And, and I think fundamentally, it's about whether anything is learned at all. Then it's the magnitude of what is learned, how much is learned. Um, I think what's important as well is that we don't look at one individual party here, uh, not from a blame perspective, but, but then take focus away from the fact that there are a number of individuals or departments that are complicit in some way. Um, the way in which uh, the public sector has gone about accepting, uh, taking into service uh, a poor system that's beyond an original uh, statement of works, scope of requirements, that it has signed something off um, that's gone beyond budget, there has to be greater controls in there. And that, that is ultimately on the public sector. We can take Fujitsu out of that for a second. That could be any supplier, and frankly, uh, of any size. And I think there has to be a, a real look there as to how do um, suppliers and the, the public sector operate together? How can that be more successful? But how can it be under a greater scrutiny? Where does that integrity sit on both sides? Um, you know, I've uh, used the words bullying culture, which, which I know are, again, very provocative. Um, when I moved from working in the private sector, which I had done only when I then first moved into the, into the public sector, I, I had no experience. I remember within weeks being absolutely shocked at where the balance of power was. When I worked with private sector clients, um, you know, with, with the greatest of respect, it was if they said jump, you asked how high. That is how it worked. They, they as you would expect, they're your customer. Of course, you know, you want a, a partnership in that kind of thing, but that is how it worked. I saw almost entirely a complete shift the other way. And this was everything from the most basic of conversations to how procurement seemed to operate through to commercials. And I know that's not something that can necessarily be immediately fixed. And I'm not saying that there's anything there that is uh, untoward, but there has to be a confidence with, uh, within public sector as to how they're prepared to act and prepared to hold to account that there has to be a number of notches further along the line um, than what it has been. So there's, there's, there's lessons learned there. I think um, when it comes to the commercials, uh, I think some of the, the commercials have to, to be just a lot tighter. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say that I know the inner workings, of course, of every contract that's ever been written between the supplier and public sector. Uh, there are a number of things that are, of course, in the public domain, so you can obviously go and scrutinize them yourself. Um, but they have to be more black and white, and when they're not adhered to, there is appropriate penalty, there is appropriate punishment. That's the simple matter of, of how a contract works. Um, and, uh, and, and whoever, which side you're on, whether you're the public sector or whether you're the supplier, um, you have to adhere to that. And then, you know, finally, I suppose here is, is the suppliers, look, I understand what running a business is all about, that's what I do. But you, you've got to have at the, your very core an integrity. If, you, if you're just about money, then I, I think that's a real problem. It's a real problem. And, and I'm not trying to break down the entire fundamentals of business, but you know there has to be a desire to deliver on your promise. Again, it's at that contractual level. Uh, and that's the very basics of it. If you cannot deliver what you have contractually promised, there has to be suitable punishment or penalty that you have to pick up. Um, and, and I know it hasn't been like that in the past, but I think it can be uh, um, a lot a lot more harsh. Um, and I think really what we're going to see here, um, you know, the, the, the ultimate um, kind of measure of the lessons learned will filter through from what the punishments are. If this becomes a, a, a number of protracted conversations that end up with no real outcome or no real punishment, then I'm sorry to say that the reality is nothing is going to change. We're just going to look back at this as a, a story that 
uh, came into the public eye off the back of an ITV drama that's something that was in the past, and that's just not acceptable.